On this episode of Mind Your Own Business, we meet a champion of change at the helm of a consulting firm for the neurodivergent. Canadian entrepreneurs who are looking to build their businesses their way with me, Kevin Shaw. I live with total sight loss. I'm a serial entrepreneur who loves to build, lead, and inspire. This is Mind Your Own Business. Hello and welcome to our show. On this episode, we meet Wanda, the founder of Liberty Co. Wanda is revolutionizing and fueling changes in the work sector for people in the neurodivergent community. Wanda's lived experience and business acumen are helping her speak and advocate for change. Now she's looking to turn some of her speaking engagements into long-term leads. My name is Wanda Deschamps and I'm the founder and principal of Liberty Co. I founded Liberty Co. in the winter of 2019. I decided to become an entrepreneur after a 25-year career in the charitable sector. And I thought Liberty Co. was going to be a service for the charitable sector because that was my background. And then I had received my diagnosis of autism the summer of 2017, and I was becoming more attuned with my diagnosis and my identity as an autistic and I started to become involved in advocacy. Over time, my advocacy became my business. So I reoriented Liberty Co. before COVID, and I actually announced it in the fall of 2020, that it would be a consultancy focused on increasing the participation level of the neurodiverse population in the workforce. I sought diagnosis because of increased challenges with my mental health. Well, my immediate reaction with the diagnosing psychologist was that it was a relief. And what I meant by that is that it explained so many things, which I never understood. I never understood why I felt different. I never understood why intentions were projected on me that I did not have. I finally had an answer for all these questions that I thought were unanswerable. It was really unfortunate that the supports were not there in the workplace. And I decided I would pursue entrepreneurship. I reached out to my network and sought advice. What I heard from a number of folks was, would you consider entrepreneurship? And it had been mentioned to me before, but it was never the right time. And then I decided this is the right time. So I founded Liberty Co. It's been incredible. I had a sense when I reoriented Liberty Co to focus on neurodiverse employment that it was the right thing to do. It was still a bit of a risk. Um, however, the support that I've received is incredible. It's been great to meet so many people who really want to see more participation in the workforce from neurodivergent individuals and especially autistic individuals. I say that because that is an emphasis of, of mine. I'm based in Waterloo, Ontario, and I work out of my home office. Most of my work is done virtually. The four buckets uh, within Liberty Co are speaking, training, advising, and consulting. And so those are the four areas that I work within when I partner with organizations. The most common bucket I'm brought in for in terms of my services is speaking. They range from conferences and in-house retreats to part of a series that an organization may be offering to standalone events that are happening. What I'd really like to do is try to convert some of the speaking contracts to longer term contracts with organizations. I always say in terms of talent, um, neurodiverse talent belongs from the boardroom to the C-suite to the office cubicle. And um, my services are an example of that. My name is Nadia Banton. I am the Entrepreneurship and Technology Advisor with the Waterloo Region Small Business Center. I am also the SDG Idea Factory Innovation Lead. So I am an advisor. Um, a lot of the services that you get through the Waterloo Region Small Business Center are advisory work. Um, we sit down with entrepreneurs, try to help them uh, decide where they're going with their business, uh, help them register their business, try to see their vision through, and just help them with resources along the way to help them be successful. Nadia's combination friend and mentor because she knows so much about entrepreneurship and um, it's wonderful to have someone, you know, who you're so close to, who not only really understands you, uh, understands the space that you're working in. I first met Wanda, I think it was in 2019 when I was consulting before I actually took this role. She had this, uh, this um, 
this catchphrase that she kept using when we met one another and it was woman for woman. And so given my space working in entrepreneurship and like that marketing piece, I kept saying to her that she should kind of like coin it or she could use it as a hashtag. Um, and so she has, and so we use that to support um, women for women where, wherever the opportunity exists. Coming out as an autistic female, um, you know, at a particular age uh, is really, it's, it's, it's scary, it's nervous, it's, you know, it's nerve wracking. Um, and I think, you know, that took a lot of courage to be able to do that, but it also allows other people to identify with it and be able to, um, to kind of just have that, that comfort in knowing that there's other people that have done it and it starts to remove barriers. I'm very happy to be an entrepreneur. What I say is it has to be a choice. People need to become entrepreneurs because they want to, not because they're pushed out of exclusionary and discriminatory workplaces. I want people to feel empowered, to know that we really need to be able to make our own choices. Liberty Co. has definitely grown and it's evolved. It's time to take Liberty Co. to the next level, whether that be converting existing clients to try to develop more longer term partnerships, whether it's bringing on more clients, whether it's more looking at diversifying services. It's really time for Liberty Co. to evolve. And so I'm really looking forward to receiving advice on how that might happen, what it might look like. So something I think is important to add about my business and as we look more and more at this space is that in terms of autistic employment, neurodivergent employment, I really believe that it's time that more of these services be offered by people who are members of the community instead of folks on our behalves and, and for us. We're back in studio here on Mind Your Own Business with Karen Wong. Hi, Karen. Hey, Kev. Karen's one of our mentors here on Mind Your Own Business. So we just saw that video about Wanda and Liberty Co. Wanda's doing a lot of different things with speaking and training and consulting, so many different things. How does she stay focused? Well, it's definitely something we have to dig into. I think right now we need to find out if she's doing that because she likes all those things or whether or not she can't say no. A lot of early entrepreneurs need to figure out how to like leverage that customer base and get at what their customers find really unique about them. How does Wanda do that? Well, I think one thing we're going to need to learn and find out is whether she's doing everything manually or if she's adding in some automation or processes, right? Yeah, I agree. We'll find out how Wanda does that or if she does that when Karen joins the rest of the mentors right here on Mind Your Own Business. We'll be right back. This is Mind Your Own Business. I'm Karen Wong. I'm a CEO and entrepreneur who has built self-funded businesses from scratch. As a mentor, I help people learn from my wins and mistakes. I'm Kelly Braun Johnson. I'm autistic and hard of hearing, and I'm a business advisor for social enterprises and nonprofits. My name is Chris Goley. I'm founder and CEO of several bootstrap startups. I mentor young entrepreneurs from across Canada. Welcome back to Mind Your Own Business. We're here in studio with our three mentors, as always, Karen, Kelly, and Chris. And joining us in studio as well is Wanda Deschamps. Hi, Wanda. Hello. We heard all about Liberty Co. before the break. Where do you think you're having the greatest number of challenges right now? What I'm wondering about is if there's an opportunity, for example, to convert speaking clients to longer term clients whether it be through consulting, advising, or training. So I'm wondering about that. However, I know the mentors are going to have great pieces of advice for me. Which mentor wants to go first? I'll jump in. Um, certainly, uh, speaking opportunities are, are good revenue, but you know, moving to those longer term contracts obviously presents a, a great opportunity for recurring revenue. Can you tell me a little bit about how that's currently happening? Like the ones that are converting from speaking what does that look like right now? I would say that the ones who are converting from speaking, I have a sense when they reach out to me that perhaps it's going to be longer term engagement where others that are speaking and, and that's it, it's a one, a one opportunity contract. Um, I have a sense when they first reach out that that's what they're looking at. So maybe that's something that we could pay a bit of attention to. 
So something I might look at with that is is the idea of, of packaging services or, or uh, plans for for customers to help those those kind of one off uh, customers understand these are the other things that I can offer your company and and they could take different shapes, right? So you know there may be or smaller organizations that need a full breadth of services and consulting, and other ones are you know what I just need a plan or I just need someone to come in and do training uh, alongside it. So helping guide those uh, those one off customers towards a more in depth engagement. Uh, by using packaging might be an opportunity for you. Thanks. Kelly, is there a risk in putting packages together where it's just speaking and something else that the client might not use? So I think there's an opportunity. I mean, just to understand a little bit more about the different buckets you have um, between consulting and advising and then the speaking, are those all the same clients all the time or how did that come about? No, so there can be overlap. However, they operate independently too. With advising, more or less I was asked. So it's because organizations reached out to me and asked me to advise. I think in this case, you might have some interesting opportunities in terms of either separating those clients and saying you have a speaking client, which is different from your advising and consulting clients, or working on that conversion from the speaking and that education piece, and then bringing that into saying, very clearly what you can do for the company after you've done this speaking, how you can consult with them and what you can do, what kind of change you can make. Thanks. Karen, I'm gonna throw it to you. Well, you know, I love operations, so I always like to ask tactical things. So I'd love to understand how are you engaging with your clients, your existing clients today? If what you're asking is about client stewardship, it's in a number of different ways. So it's, of course, those, you know, immediate thank yous following, you know, any kind of contract. Also, a number of things throughout the year. So for instance, to give examples would be if there is something released in terms of a report around neurodiversity or disability um, in the workplace, um, sending it out, making sure organizations have received it, you know, whether it's extracting a quote that is particularly relevant to them or um, highlighting something that I think could be of particular interest? Well, I think I raised it because our, we had a, uh, an entrepreneur in the last season who actually was also a consultant advisor and did a lot of speaking engagements. And she's had a lot of success on LinkedIn, for example, because she created a checklist, which she's been sharing, and she's giving live examples of how she helps. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people can't visualize it, right? Right, And so she'll post things about that. And the thing is, it's not necessarily the same customer buying. It could be that customer referring it to all these other businesses because right. every entrepreneur knows entrepreneurs, yes. right? And so we'd always recommend that you try to utilize the existing base to also keep going with organic because the well is pretty endless at this point. Yeah. A lot, we need a lot of help and you're there for it. And so you really want to make sure you keep that pipeline, which we normally call all like sales really kind of has to always have something coming up, right? Yes. And you want to keep your pipeline full all the way yes. through. So that's usually how people will start to build that out and get that engagement and get people working for you, not right. just you contacting them all the time. Right, right. Very good, very good. One thing we haven't talked about is training. Have you considered putting training packages together, whether they be through LinkedIn Learning or lynda.com, these types of avenues to uh, have a consistent product that clients can go and purchase from you? I've considered it, but I haven't looked at it fully, whether it be through an academy of some kind sure. or other modules. So that's an interesting idea. I like the idea of packages, what you were talking about, Chris. And I think it's great if you can come up with maybe three price points or four price points that are sort of low medium, low, medium, and then high, and then figuring out what to slot into those packages. Where does Wanda go in the next 60 days? I'll start with Chris. I probably come back to the package idea. Um, mm -hmm. it ties a little bit into what Kevin was saying of just having these, these ideas of, the, of what you can offer different organizations of different sizes. Um, the other thing I, I you know, it, going back to the pipeline side of things is, is looking to register with like the speakers bureau or get an agent involved to increase the number of speaking opportunities that you have uh, because if the ultimate goal is to increase awareness you want to be doing as much of that that speaking and advocacy as, as possible so uh, i'd look to those as uh, some some points to work on the next 60 days okay that's definitely doable 
Karen. I would say utilize your existing customer base more so because mm -hmm. you are reaching out to them and you're doing the one-on-one, -on -one, which is always valued. But at the same time, um, you really need a more, a mass way in which to actually get information and update out so that they can actually start to do the work for you. You need them to start referring you to other things and more importantly, visualizing mm -hmm. the services mm -hmm. because truly so many people don't really understand the how mm -hmm. and they, unless they can see it in mm -hmm. action. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's usually the, the fastest way. And of course, you, you have a network already that you can leverage. So you should, I mean, start, start small, right? Start somewhere where you feel comfortable, but it's something you should really consider in the process. So you're not hinting that she should get on TikTok? <laughs> Maybe not. Although, I can, you know, a lot of people do very well on TikTok, I gotta say. Yes. yes. <laughs> Kelly, down at the end, we'll go to you. Yeah, you're already powerful on LinkedIn, on Instagram, I think, too. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you're doing in terms of outreach and advocacy. So tell your story, tell exactly what you're going to do, how you're going to make change, because we're, we're all interested in making this change. This change is so slow. It's so hard. Um, but if you can say specifically what is unique to you and what you're offering, um, and really focus on, like I really agree with Karen about really focusing on it and, and, and communicating that how. Um, it's less about taking what's coming at you and just saying yes. Focus on exactly what you do and what you do specifically and put that out there and then boom, like a magnet, you're going to see people coming at you. Thank you. That's, that's very helpful. Yeah. Focus more on the how. What part of this resonates with you the most, Wanda? Oh, it's difficult to pick. Um, what I'd like to do is there's some that um, I could move forward quite quickly, like mm -hmm. the Speakers Bureau, um, like some of the content of my presentations um, to include more about the how. Sure. Um, and then there's some that I'll look at in the longer term, like leveraging my network more fully. Really excited to see where this goes in the next 60 days. Thanks so much for coming into Mind Your Own Business to talk to us about it. Thanks for the opportunity. This has been great. We'll be back after the break to see how Wanda does in the next 60 days, right here on Mind Your Own Business. Don't go anywhere. This is Mind Your Own Business. When we first met Wanda, she was exploring how to evolve her organization. She needed advice on how to take it to the next level. We caught up with Wanda to see if she's any closer to reaching her target. Wanda Deschamps is here with us in studio. Hi, Wanda. Hi, Kevin. How have things been going with Liberty Co. over the past couple of months? Things have been going well. Well, that's good. It means our mentors know what they're talking about. Indeed, they do. <laughs> Tell me a little bit more. I heard from the mentors that I should focus on the how more. Mm -hmm. So how am I delivering value to organizations around increasing neurodiversity inclusion? and specifically neurodiverse employment. And so I have done that. I've done things like I've launched an impact page on my website, which mentions some of the clients I've worked with and what we've done together uh, in these areas. That's a really great way to tell the story of how your business is having an impact. Is there a, is there a customer story that stands out to you that, that's a part of that page? An organization that I partnered with, they first asked me to write an article for their bi-monthly publication, mm -hmm. which I've done. That's on my updated media page. Nice. And then later they asked me to speak at their international conference hosted in Montreal as a panelist oh, with cool. some others. So it's, it's wonderful when you can collaborate with an organization in a few different areas. It was great to be a panelist in person and back to in-person events again. Do you think you'll be able to line up the cost of what those, what it costs to put on one of those events and get to uh, a point where you've got a, a, a really great fee structure behind that? The short answer is yes. I am definitely letting that evolve. And so I have developed a different fee structure for in-person uh, versus virtual versus hybrid. Um, so that is something um, that I have been paying attention to, and I look forward to um, moving it forward even more over the next uh, weeks and months. And are you getting people interested in virtual as well? Yes, the interest for virtual is still there. Is there a big difference between the virtual fee structure, uh, or are you adding value to that in, in a way that 
is, I guess, similar to what you would offer in person? It's difficult to compare right. that, for instance, virtual can allow for more structure, mm -hmm. whereas in person can allow for that different experience, perhaps um, a closer experience for those attending. So I'm demonstrating the value and the difference in each. Where do things go with Liberty Co. over the next, let's say, six months to a year? I believe because of a few things and largely because of the support that I've received from the mentors that I am going to be able to demonstrate more how I'm helping organizations around neurodiverse inclusion. And because of that, I will be able to move beyond speaking and doing more consulting work, which was really my goal. So I'm really grateful. I really appreciate the fact that you took some time out to come here in person. That's uh, obviously a really big impact to come here and tell us about it on Mind Your Own Business. My pleasure. Thanks for the opportunity. Well, as employment opportunities become more inclusive for neurodivergent people, we're sure that Wanda's skill and drive will make sure this community gets their fair shot. Certainly wish her the best of luck on her mission. If you want to find out more about Liberty Co., you can go to libertyco.ca. Well, that's our show. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, don't forget to support the entrepreneurs in your life, mind your own business, and remember, success comes in a can. Failure comes in a cannot. Producers, Nick Appleton, Tyler Cameron, Kevin Kincaid, Kevin Shaw. Editor, Rod Christie. Director of Photography, Kevin Wong. Audio, Mike Merton. Integrated Described Video Consultant, Ron Rickford. President and CEO, David Arrington. Apple Orchard Productions. Copyright 2023. AMI. Accessible Media Inc. An AMI original production.